Hello and welcome. I'm here today with Jenny Jean-Jacques, Information Governance Manager, to talk about the importance of appropriate use of data within healthcare, uh, staying cyber secure, and the role we all have to play in upholding information governments. So welcome. Uh, by way of an introduction, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your role at the Trust, and how you became involved in information governance? Uh, morning and thank you, Anne. So I, I'm Jenny Jean-Jacques. I'm an information governance manager for both Hillingdon Hospital and London Northwest. I joined the information governance team in the summer of 2018. So my previous role was community health records manager for London Northwest. Uh, where I implemented policies and procedures to bring the community up to date on records management. And um, I worked in the records management for five years in community services and um, it was being digitised at the time. So all the paper notes were being uh, digitised and going on to system one. And um, therefore my role was then less reliant. So uh, I was approached by the information governance manager uh, to join the information governance team. So you can imagine I was thrilled. Um, I was then interviewed by the chief information officer and I was appointed. Oh, fantastic. Congratulations. So why is information governance so important for everyone working in the NHS? It's important because it's uh, to make information available when needed for the care of patients, implementing controls, processes and roles to ensure that information is treated as a valuable business asset in today's changing marketplace. Um, information governance is the framework for handling information in a secure and confidential manner that allows organisations and individuals to manage patient personal and sensitive information legally, securely, efficiently and effectively in order to deliver the best possible healthcare and services for our patients. So what are some of the most common forms of data breaches and how can we take steps to prevent them? Okay, so the most common form of data breaches are stolen information, which is, you know, employees could leave a computer on or their phone or file somewhere um, they shouldn't have. Um, so we have also ransomwares. So that is where you suddenly get a message um, stating that all data on your phone or computer is now encrypted. So it's denied you access to your own data. So with ransomware, the perpetrator will tell you that they will run the data back over to you and not release it to the public if you pay a fee. And then this can be arranged from, oh gosh, nominal amounts from hundreds to thousands of pounds. Um, the problem here is that you're dealing with a admitted criminal and um, paying ransom doesn't guarantee that you'll actually get your data back or that they won't release it later. Then there's also phishing. So phishing attacks someone, um, phishing attacks come from a third party hacker who creates sites that looks incredible, incredibly genuine. Um, for example, they, um, they make a site that mirrors something like PayPal and ask you to log into the site for a necessary change. And then if you log in without realizing that you're not simply logging into your own account, you can end up giving the hacker your password. So there is also malware, which is a, also a virus, and it's actually sent to people with the goal of wiping their computer of all the data. This can be harmful to any company, especially those who rely on their data. For example, if a malware virus was sent to a hospital, it could wipe the data of thousands of patients. This could result in a very serious situation, delay in treatment or even mean the death of someone or those inside the hospital. So the thing is, do not click on items you do not know. The other thing is another form of data breach is password sharing. And this is a major concern in the organisation where information is shared with the wrong recipient by email or not ensuring positive patient identification from admission to discharge of the patient. So as an organisation, um, the organisation should have the following in place to prevent breaches. So we have established 
clear policies and procedures. We have training for staff on data security and protection. We have monitor access and activity. We implement cyber security and we use data breach prevention tools such as firewalls, antivirus softwares, spyware, various tools to defend our business against data breaches. So I think most people would be aware that we need to protect personal data and that applies to any company. But obviously in the NHS, yeah. it's equally important that we share information with the right people and that stuff is up to date and accurate. Um, and there are risks within that, as in making sure people are sharing information appropriately. Can you tell us a little bit more about that aspect of data governance? Yes, so data governance is setting internal standards, data policies that apply to how data is gathered, stored, processed and disposed of. If governance who can access what kinds of data and what kinds of data are under governance. Um, an example is only certain members of staff have access on the data of employees, salaries and only people in human resources should have access to it. So in our department, we carry out audits to ascertain whether inappropriate access to patient records is taking place. So after an investigation of the audit, if deemed inappropriate access, this could lead to disciplinary action against the individual. So obviously mistakes do happen. Um, so what should you do if you suspect there has been a data breach or the integrity of some of the data has been compromised? As an organisation, a data text must be completed whenever you suspect a data breach has occurred. So in um, in the data text, you should record the date and the time of the of the incident, as well as the information that's actually known about the incident. OK, it's always good practice to alert your line manager that a breach has occurred. And if you are unable to complete a data text, your line manager may complete on your behalf to avoid the delay of reporting the breach. Now, if it's a serious breach of data, the trust, um, as in the information governance department, we have 72 hours to report the breach to the information commissioner's office. And that is, and they are the regulatory body um, for the trusts. Okay, so report quickly is the key message. There. It is indeed, absolutely. Um, are there any other messages that you would like to share? Yes, um, we are, as in the Information Governance Department, we'll be holding a series of roadshows um, at both sites at London Northwest as well as at Hillingdon Hospital. So the next one for Hillingdon Hospital is on the 14th of, Fabu uh, 14th of February um, in the Choices restaurant. So it's Valentine's Day on that day and we'd be delighted to see as many people as possible. We also have the 21st of March and the 28th of March. Um, the roadshows are to raise awareness of data security protection and cyber security and also it's an opportunity for us to actually engage with staff to get their feedback on their understanding of data security and protection but also to actually meet staff thank you brilliant thank you so much for your time today thank you